for more space to house asylum seekers. The city is now considering building a tent city on Randall's Island once again. Start working on their next path. Uh, and then newer arrivals coming to the city can come into our respite sites. The shelter for asylum seekers on Randall's Island. Police say six people were arrested in connection to the violence and have been charged. This comes as Mayor Adams and city officials have consistently asked for state and federal help. A new tent shelter is opening in New York City for asylum seekers who've been bused to the Big Apple from the southern border. Point that New York City can do it alone. We're still rallying as best we can. But we're definitely going to need more federal assistance. Increasing capacity. The Strat City has already expanded its controversial migrant complex on Randall's Island's youth soccer field to house 3,000 people, 50% more than expected, before asylum seekers even moved in on Sunday. The site, which will now consist of five dormitory-style tents, began housing the first wave of migrants there in the afternoon, with about 150 single men expected before the end of the day, city officials said. This isn't the solution for the next two, three, four months. This is giving us a little breathing room for the next few days, really, warned Christina Farrell, the city's first deputy commissioner of emergency management, to reporters during a tour on Sunday. Each air-conditioned sleeping tent will house 600 green and black cots, while a dining tent featuring long white tables will offer three meals a day. The dining center will also stay open 24-7 to also provide round-the-clock drinks and snacks, and laundry service and individual lock boxes will be offered too. There are separate bathroom cabins and an intake area. Authorities initially said the facility would house 2,000 migrants, but that figure was up to 3,000, officials revealed Sunday, as the city groans under its massive migrant influx. There are a lot of misconceptions and misinformation about facilities such as these, Immigration Affairs Commissioner Manuel Castro told reporters. But as you can see, these facilities are well constructed. They have quite ample space for migrants, asylum seekers to congregate and spread out too. The first bus of single men pulled up to Randall's Island at 1.53 p.m. I feel good, said Rafael Bracco, a 29-year-old Venezuelan immigrant who said he'd been in the city for six months. The government of the United States of America, they help you. But locals weren't happy about the move, including over the fact that it wiped out some heavily used athletic fields that help keep New York City kids off the streets. One of Mayor Eric Adams' own top commissioners, Vilda Vera Mayuga, head of the city's Department of Consumer and Worker Protection, has even circulated petitions to try to block the use of the youth soccer field for the mega shelter facility. We're taking away from people who are real New Yorkers, said Odalisa Abiles, a 47-year-old legal assistant from Queens who was at a family barbecue on Randall's Island on Sunday. I was born here on the Lower East Side and you're telling me they come first? How is that? Abilis told the Post. I pay my tax money, federal, local, all that beautifulness, and my children don't get to enjoy New York? Jules Lewis, an 18-year-old student who lives in Queens and plays soccer with the Cosmopolitan Soccer League, added, I think it's unfair to the people who've been coming here for such a long time. There's really nowhere else to play soccer, Lewis said Sunday. It's not just us. It's little kids too. I'm scared of what's to come. I don't want this place to become somewhere we can't go to. Ted Long, Senior Vice President of NYC Health Hospitals, said there will be 24-7 security at the site. As everybody knows, with the number of asylum seekers crossing our borders into our country each day, we're seeing the numbers go down, Long said. However, in New York City, we're seeing the number of asylum seekers every day go up. So because of that, this facility could be full fairly soon, he said. Today, the city is opening a new emergency response and relief center to house asylum seekers. A new tent shelter is opening in New York City for asylum seekers who've been bused to the Big Apple from the southern border. Or does this speak to the humanitarian crisis your city is facing? This is not a sign of a progress. For more space to house asylum seekers, the city is now considering building a tent city on Randall's Island once again. Farrell said the men being moved in Sunday were selected from among the thousands of migrants being housed by the city. We have different populations, she said. We have adult families, single women and single men. 
since we're starting with single men, we looked at our different facilities and who's been at our sides the longest, and so these are the people we're moving in today. The massive complex is being funded by state taxpayers who will shell out $20 million a month to keep it up and running, Governor Kathy Hochul said earlier this month. It's one of four state-funded migrant sites with Hochul's plan to add Brooklyn's Floyd Bennett Field, a former U.S. military airfield, fizzling after White House officials backed off on approving the plan. The Randalls Island site is the latest mega shelter set up to handle the unprecedented influx of migrants from the U.S. border with Mexico since last spring. Adams said some 100,000 asylum seekers have been abused into the Big Apple from border states, with the city now housing nearly 60,000 of them, while others were abused to upstate hotels. Adams has estimated that the migrant crisis could cost the city $12 billion over three years. Hochul and Adams have repeatedly sought more help from President Joe Biden to handle the crisis. The U.S. is facing a humanitarian crisis over where to place migrants who are seeking asylum in this country. Start working on their next path, uh, and then newer arrivals coming to the city can come into our respite sites. Point that New York City can do it alone. We're still rallying as best we can, but we're definitely going to need more federal assistance. We need every New Yorker that has something to offer to play a role. Shelter fight. A migrant was knifed in the neck during a violent brawl at a shelter on New York City's Randall Island, where everyone has a knife. The victim, 24, was found outside the state-funded shelter with a knife wound from an unknown sharp object on Thursday afternoon, sources told the New York Post. He and the security guard were reportedly involved in a large fight that broke out inside the relief center and spilled outside. It's understood the pair had been arguing before the victim was knifed. He was taken to nearby Harlem Hospital in stable condition. A total of 18 people were taken into custody following the incident, NYPD confirmed to Mail Online. Charges are pending for six people and 12 individuals were released with criminal court summonses. The fight broke out just before 3.30 p.m. on Thursday at the makeshift shelter, which was erected just last year to house the overflow of migrants who have come to NYC. Police were called to the scene after receiving a 911 call about a knifing and upon arrival discovered the victim had been knifed in the neck. Paramedics transferred him to an area hospital. Photographs from the scene show the police cordoned off an area by the shelter. Officers were also seen taking several people into custody at the scene. A shelter for asylum seekers on Randall's Island. Police say six people were arrested in connection to the violence and have been charged. A violent encounter between NYPD officers and my, some of the migrants here in the city. All started inside the shelter Thursday and continued outside. A 24-year-old man was stabbed in the neck. What makes anybody think that he's going to behave on the streets of the city of New York? Felix Cardona, 29, was arrested on Thursday and charged with attempted attack. Jose Goabara, 31, Leron Eicher, 19, and Brett Franier, also 19, were all charged with criminal possession of a weapon and menacing. Lady Mar Montero Alvarez, 18, was charged with criminal possession of a weapon and tampering with physical evidence. Migrants residing at the facility have said that they have regular concerns about their safety at the shelter, with Mauricio Pinto telling the Post, everyone has a knife. The knifing comes after migrant Daphne Alexis Conazela Sabejo, 24, was slayed at the shelter earlier this month after being knifed by another resident. It's understood that Moises Coronado, 27, stabbed Sabejo in the torso while they were waiting in line for food at the dining tent. Randall's Island Migrant Shelter is fully funded by the state of New York. It spans across 6.4 acres of land and houses nearly 3,000 adult male migrants. The facility is one of the makeshift tent cities that were set up in August 2023 to help with the city's migrant crisis. Migrant Curfew The proposed curfew for the migrant shelter on Randall's Island, set to go into effect Wednesday night, reflect Mayor Adams' response to recent violent incidents and aims to enhance safety and management within the facility. With approximately 3,000 migrants under its care, City Hall asserts that the curfew aligns with policies in other city-run facilities and is intended to streamline capacity management. The curfew, spanning from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., 
is designed to regulate the movements of residents within the shelter while allowing for essential activities such as work, school travel, legal and medical appointments, and emergencies. By imposing specific exemptions, officials aim to balance security concerns with the migrants' practical needs and rights. To make sure that we're able to meet all their immediate needs, which as you saw include medical attention. This comes as Mayor Adams and city officials have consistently asked for state and federal help. Randall's Island is now home to another migrant shelter site providing housing and other resources. The decision to implement a curfew follows a series of violent incidents at the shelter, prompting the installation of metal detectors in February as a security measure. One notable event involved a 23-year-old migrant attacking a security guard, resulting in arrests and charges. This incident underscores the challenges faced by authorities in maintaining order and safety within the facility. Efficient capacity management is cited as a primary rationale for the curfew, suggesting that regulating residents' movements during nighttime hours could facilitate better allocation of resources and accommodation. By ensuring that migrants are present in their assigned beds during specific times, staff can optimize supervision and services. The City Hall spokesperson emphasizes that the policy is part of broader efforts to address security concerns and enhance operational effectiveness within the shelter. However, the decision also raises questions about the underlying factors contributing to crime and disorder in the facility, including overcrowding, inadequate resources, and socioeconomic tensions. Critics may raise concerns about the potential impact of the curfew on migrants' autonomy and well-being, particularly if it restricts their freedom of movement without sufficient justification or alternatives. Additionally, there may be calls for comprehensive measures to address the root causes of crime and improve conditions within the shelter, including increased staffing, counseling services, and community engagement initiatives. And that's going to do it for this video, you guys. See you next time, and bye for now.